Well, if you sit and watch the Barbie movie, all you can see is pink. And when I came home after watching the movie, all I could see was I had a Barbie garden. Everywhere, pink flowers in all shades of pink. So I thought the perfect thing to do would be to have a Barbie garden party. So all garden parties begin with the food. So I wanted food that fit my theme, which is pink and slightly oversized. So our sandwiches here are radish sandwiches. I know that sounds strange, but they're delicious. Some roast beef sandwiches. Underneath that, some cucumber and salmon sandwiches. Cause salmon's kind of pink, kind of a Barbie color. And for my produce, I didn't want to go with cherry tomatoes. The bees are going crazy around here. If you see a bee, if you see a critter, it's a bee. Um, so I used the Campari tomatoes, which are a little bigger than the cherry tomatoes, which suits Barbie. And her carrots always had a little bit of green on top. And the fake lettuce, the Savoy cabbage looks like fake lettuce. And for our beverage, we went with some raspberry zinger tea since it has a little bit of red in it. Now for our treats, we had to have watermelon because Barbie always had watermelon and strawberries, big strawberries and very pink watermelon. I included some cherries and some grapes. And of course you have to have a cake and there's always a piece of the cake taken out with a little whipped cream and a berry on top. And some macarons that give us those pretty pastel colors. Now, to make my garden more Barbie, I went to the fabric store and got a, a discontinued end of a bolt. And for $11 worth of fabric, I got some bright pink, slightly overscaled, kind of a damask print, enough to make pillowcases. That's all those are, is a pillowcase for the backs of the cushions on these two chairs. And there was enough for a little table runner. And finally, a pop of pink over here on the swing. And at the thrift store, I found a shear. It's supposed to be blowing more, but it's kind of still, I put a fan on it, but it's still kind of not blowing very much. I imagined it billowing like in uh, The Great Gatsby with the, the white billows, but it's not doing that for now. Maybe a big gust will come along. And I pulled several of my pink flowers around here. My New Guinea Impatience, set them in. I'm telling you, the bees are going crazy. Now, don't overlook thrift stores. I wasn't looking for these, but I found these plates. $2.99 for five plates. And they are a tin plate, which is perfect for an outdoor party. And on the back, they tell you that they're Duke of Gloucester made for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You can see they were 99 cents, but if you bought all of them, it was $2.99. Now I came home, I thought, I bet somebody knows what those are. On Cherish, in perfect condition, a set of six sells for $135. And the cheapest I could find them with some scratches, mine have a few scratches, not bad, but a few. The cheapest they sell for is $9 a piece, plus a ridiculous amount of shipping. Now, I'll show you how I did my little radish sandwiches. I know that sounds strange, but they are absolutely delicious. We made little radish roses.
and some these are things that I just rearranged how I use them in a different configuration to give me that Barbie color. So all ready for a Barbie garden party. Now over here are my pink garden flocks. And this is part of the reason I'm like, I have a Barbie garden. So here we go with our Barbie garden. <laughs> now my garden party is for big girls. Um, the foods, I would have changed the foods, probably made a cream cheese and jelly, red strawberry or raspberry sandwich. That's what I would have done if I'd had little children that I wanted to please. Make sandwiches that are for a childish palate, not an adult palate. But uh, you can be creative. There were also many, many pink treats in the bakery department. So you don't have to bake something. I baked a pound cake, but you don't have to bake anything. There are plenty of things that you can purchase ready-made. So now I'll show you how I pulled this together. The sandwiches I'm going to start with are the cucumber sandwich and the salmon sandwich. The cucumber is cut in a finger and the salmon is cut in the triangle. I make a cream cheese base that I'll use for both of these. And I put about five ounces of cream cheese and a tablespoon or so of good mayonnaise, some salt, some grated onion. Um, I use my microplane zester, so it's very fine. And a bunch, I probably used about a quarter cup of um, fresh dill because I absolutely love dill. And I start from my cucumber sandwich by spreading the cream cheese mixture on two slices of um, I think this is a Pepperidge Farm, farmhouse bread, nice tender bread, makes a nice little sandwich. And this will help the sandwich to stick together. And I have thinly sliced the cucumbers and some salt and some pepper. And I put those two together. And again, that cream cheese holds it together. And I remove the crusts and cut them into fingers. And even children love this sandwich. It's a delicious sandwich. Now I start the very same way for the salmon sandwich with cream cheese on both sides. And I put on it salmon. This is the smoked salmon. Um, and unfortunately, I closed it before I took a picture. And it sticks together so well, there's no way I could remove it and have a good picture. But again, I've done the same thing um, by removing the crust. And this one I will cut into triangles. Now, um, the salmon that I use, I just buy this at Costco. I buy it all the time. It's a Norwegian smoked salmon from Greece. Now, I don't know what makes it Norwegian, but it's made in Greece. And it has, uh, you know, a traditional flavor, a dill flavor, and a pepper flavor. And here they are. The fingers are the cucumber and the triangles are the salmon. Now on to those sandwiches that are on the top tier, the radish and the roast beef. Now I'm going to start with the roast beef because it's similar. Um, probably about three ounces of cream cheese is what I did in here. And um, I put, again, a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise, a little bit of grated onion. And for this one, because it's for roast beef, I put in some horseradish sauce to give it a little kick because we like that. Now, again, spread on both sides of the bread, that same bread. I'm, I'm using that white bread because I want it to be white, very much the Barbie theme. And so I've generously applied some roast beef from the deli and I put on four tomato slices and some lettuce. And I'm going to cut these so that each little square, they're all they're kind of rectangles, um, each little 
squarish rectangle is going to have a tomato that's not been sliced. Um, so it's not so difficult to, to have it running down your face. And here they are on the tray with the radish sandwiches. And here's how we do the radish sandwiches. So we get baguette bread that I slice diagonally and I pretty generously apply some butter. Then I take radishes, just regular radishes, and you can either use a mandolin or if you don't have a mandolin, you can use a vegetable peeler or if you don't have a vegetable peeler, you can very thinly slice it. But the thinner they are, the better they're going to make the little roses, the easier it is to make the roses. So I've taken my largest radish slices and I have cut them in half and you can see how I've kind of lined them up and I just pick it up and twist it together in my fingers to make a little rosette. And then I, I put about two or three on each of those slices of bread and I salt it. The salt is, is kind of important. I think that makes it taste a little better. And it makes a beautiful Barbie-esque sandwich that is just delicious. Now you can see the produce there, and I've layered my platter with Savoy cabbage because it looks very much like the fake lettuce that comes with Barbie toys. I am using Campari tomatoes, not cherry tomatoes, because in case you didn't notice, all the food for Barbie is a little too big for her so that children's fingers can pick them up, and no little baby carrots. I'm going to have to have a full-size carrot with a little bit of green on top because that's the way Barbie would have it. I added some peppers and a few cucumbers and a little, um, little dip for it. Now, the treats are super easy to do. Of course, Barbie always has watermelon and oversized strawberries. So I started with that and then added some cherries and some red grapes to keep my color theme going. And then there, uh, we, uh, we've talked about the cake and the macarons, but uh, now this piece of cake is on a pink plate that you might not have noticed. And the pink plate actually came from a thrift store um, a year or so ago, and I got eight plates and four bowls for I think about $12. If you look on the back, this is Butterfly Meadow by Lennox. A real find and it's beautiful and perfect for a Barbie party. And of course there are the other plates from the thrift store to Duke of Gloucester plates. To make sure that the guests are comfortable, in the summertime, always a fan is helpful. And mosquitoes. The best way to take care of mosquitoes, I mentioned this before when we first got them, but the very best thing is a thermocell radius, which is, I think it's like $26 to make the initial investment. And then you buy the refill cartridges, which are I believe $17 a piece, which is ridiculous price. But if you Google um, refilling, there's a YouTube video for a guy that can show you how to refill um, the cartridges. So definitely do that. And I have placed three of them around the garden to create kind of a zone. And it does not deter the bees, just in case you didn't notice, but it definitely takes care of the mosquitoes. Such fun. This has been such fun to do this. I think this is a party that I will repeat. The food was delicious. It's visually very pleasing to do. I hope this video inspires you to think about something fun to do, a garden party, a tea party, to use fabrics and fun thrift store finds to have a party and a fun time in your yard. And thanks for watching and see you next time.